Aloha everyone, my name is Charles and this is the Hawaii Volcano Watch Report for December 10th, 2019. In this edition, I will cover the latest Hawaiian Volcano Observatory monthly update. We'll take a look at the earthquake activity and finally the Halemaumau Crater Lake. Before I continue, if you enjoy this type of content and would like to receive notifications when new videos are available, it is easy and free to do so. Just click that subscribe button and bell icon. Moving on, based on the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory report posted on Thursday, December 5th, 2019 at 1111 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time, monitoring data still does not seem to show any significant changes in the activity of the Kilauea volcano during November 2019. Analyzation of the past month's activity indicates about a dozen DI events which occurred beneath the summit. The seismic stations detected more than 1,800 earthquakes around the volcano during this time. That is an increase of plus or minus 10% from the previous month. However, the seismic rates are still relatively consistent for the month. Though, at the summit, Episodes of increased rates appear to be coinciding with the inflated phase of the DI events. The sulfur dioxide emissions at the summit are still low and show little to no changes. At Pu'o'o and the lower east drift zone, emission rates continue to be below the detection limits of the equipment as well. If we look at the data, since early in March of 2019, GPS and tilt meter stations located at the Kilauea summit have registered deformation which shows slow magma accumulation in the shallow sector of the summit magma system. That area is approximately one mile or one to two kilometers below ground level. However, current gas emission measurements still do not indicate any alterations that could represent the shallowing of magma. Looking at the East Rift Zone, the GPS and tilt meter stations continue to show movement that is harmonious with reduced refilling of the East Rift Zone's deep magmatic reservoir. This section of the Rift Zone inhabits the wide area between the Pu'u'u Crater and Highway 130. The current monitoring data does not show any suggestions of any forthcoming changes in activity for this section. Now, in addition to the movement along the east rift zone, the south flank of Kilauea is continuing to creep seaward at elevated rates. This acceleration seems to have begun following the 6.9 magnitude earthquake near Kalapana on May 4, 2018. There is currently no eruption activity on the island. However, some areas continue to show elevated ground temperatures and exhibit minor gas releases around the 2018 Lower East Rift Zone fissure locations. Gas emissions consist principally of water steam, meager amounts of hydrogen sulfide, and carbon dioxide. These conditions will most likely continue for the next few years or longer. To continue, we will take a quick look at Mauna Loa and see what is happening there. Based on the report for Thursday, December 5th, 2019, there is still no eruptive activity on the Mauna. Deformation and seismicity rates have not changed significantly within the past week and currently persist above long-term background levels. There have been over 70 small magnitude earthquakes detected beneath the upper elevations of Mount Aloha. However, the majority of the quakes occur at shallow depths of plus or minus 4 miles or 6 kilometers below sea level. The GPS and NSAR measurements indicate continued summit inflation, which is representative of magma supply to the volcano's shallow storage system. Finally, the sulfur cone station on the southwest rift zone of the Mauna Loa volcano reports fumarole temperature and gas concentration readings continue to be stable. It is now time to take a look at the earthquake map for the Big Island of Hawaii. 
The map image is showing 555 earthquakes that have occurred across the island between November 8th and December 8th, 2019. Please note this was the data snapshot at the time of recording and has most likely changed since then. Looking at the map, we see a noticeable cluster of quakes surrounding the area of Pahala. There have been around 325 quakes plus or minus recorded since November 8th. A cross-sectional plot of the earthquake show that the vast majority originate from deep below, which ranges from 18 miles to 26 miles beneath. According to the Kilauea status report, the south flank of the volcano is moving seaward at an accelerated rate. This rate is just higher than the 4 inches per year before the May 4, 2018 earthquake near Kalapana. Based on that information, it would be reasonable to anticipate elevated earthquake activity in the area, which is what we are seeing. I believe it is acceptable to presume this activity is the land movement and not a magmatic movement. Progressing northward to Mauna Loa, the first item that I notice is a modest cluster of quakes on the northwest slope of the volcano, the majority of them transpiring within the last two weeks. They all yield a comparable depth of fewer than 3 miles, with the average being approximately 2 miles. Looking at the cross-sectional plot of all the quakes, it shows us that they are relatively shallow across the mountain. With this information linked to other available data, we can extrapolate that these quakes appear to be representational of the magma supplied to the shallow reservoir storage system of this volcano. If we migrate over to the Kilauea Volcano Summit, we see that the quakes are mainly in or around the Caldera Crater. There have been around 32 of them in the last 30 days, and when we look at the cross-sectional plot table, it is clear the significant portion of them have been relatively shallow. They are likely representative of the DI events noted in the report, plus the continued settling of the crater. The next stop is southeast of the Kilauea summit at the Helena and Hole Pale. Here we see a line of earthquakes, for the most part, running parallel to the ridge line. In total, there have been about 33 quakes in this location covering the last 30 days. Taking a look at the cross-sectional plot table, we see the depth of these quakes varies greatly. Based on this data and other available information, I would venture to say these quakes more likely than not, signify the ongoing slumping of these regions. However, I would like to remind everyone that I am not a geologist or a volcanologist. Granted, I have gained enormous amounts of knowledge on these subjects due to the 2018 eruption. You should note this report is being written based on my interpretation of the available data and is considered my opinion. Now for what I'm sure most of you have been waiting for the Halemaumau Crater Lake segment of the report. There has been very little change in the status of the lake since my last update. The lake has proceeded to enlarge and develop at a steady rate since then. According to thermal imaging, the temperature has also remained relatively constant at around 158 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 to 75 degrees Celsius. As of December 5th, the lake measured at 531.5 feet or 162 meters east to west and 239.5 feet or 73 meters north to south. The USGS also states the water level is continuing to rise at approximately 6 inches or 15 centimeters per day. However, there is a notable discrepancy I would like to point out. If the lake level rise is at a relatively constant rate of 6 inches per day, that would indicate the amount of water entering the lake is increasing proportionately to the growth of its length and width. Now, if the water supply is of a constant rate, then as the lake grows in length and width, we should expect the measurement in the daily level rise to decrease over time. Based on the observation, one of two things is happening. There is a considerable accuracy error rate for the rising level measurements, possibly in the range of 20 to 30% plus or minus, 
or the amount of water entering the lake is increasing in volume every day. So what do you think the most likely explanation for this discrepancy is? Let me know in the comment section. Now if you appreciate content like this, consider letting me know by clicking that like button. You might also enjoy my Facebook and Instagram pages, as well as some of the great merchandise that is available. You can find links to all that in the description below. That wraps up this edition of the Hawaii Volcano Watch Report. Mahalo for watching and have an incredible morning, afternoon, or evening.